Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Realm of Unknown. My name is Shane, and I'm your host, and today we've got a rather interesting topic to discuss today, and that is Blooyong Fong, which is probably something I'm going to be butchering very often throughout this episode, uh, but it is a Swedish island just off the coast that is believed to be pretty much inhabited by witches, or the spirits of said witches. Pretty much, we're just going to get straight into it. There's really nothing new that's occurred since the last episode, uh, upload-wise or update-wise, when it comes to the brand and stuff. And yeah, i just been putting a lot of time into research and sort of planning out episodes. And with that comes more interesting topics, in my opinion, such as this, uh, a topic that you probably just don't even hear about too often because it's just that strange. But Blue Feng, which translates to the Blue Mermaid, or in some cases is known as the Blue Virgin Island, it has a lot of different names to it. Uh, it's just off the coast of another place I'm probably going to butcher, Oskarheim, Sweden, and it is today an abandoned island. But Blooyong Fong is primarily inhabited by pretty much all sorts of birds, such as eagles and ducks, and lots of insects, and it has a little small forest on it. However, the interesting part about its inhabitants isn't what is there now, but what was there a very, very long time ago. So the island itself is thought to be roughly 570 million years old, and it is spotted with giant burrows, smoothly rounded rocks, and sort of, again, that wood-like area that sort of gives it this weird, mysterious feel to it. But the most interesting aspect is the labyrinth, which is known as the Trojabarg labyrinth. Again, these are all Swedish names. Uh, I am not very good with that pronunciation. But this labyrinth uh, is something weird prehistoric archaeological find that no one knows how it came to be who built it or really what its purpose is like people theorize it but no one really knows the main aspect of this labyrinth however is the fact that within the lore of the island and within the lore of the region and pretty much the lore of why the island became so mysterious is the fact that the labyrinth and the island itself have apparently been the home of witches for a very, very long time. So the island itself is a little more than a half mile long and is a sort of dome-like shape. And in 1960 or 1926, I should say, Loyong Fong was named a national park. And it has become rather uh, sort of ominous small island across the generations. Again, having a history of witchcraft probably doesn't help. In fact, many people actually avoid saying the full name, which itself is, I'm going to pronounce this very, very bad, Blokala, which is supposedly its original name. Sailors who would venture near would avoid saying it out loud and even wrote it down as something different as they believed that, you know, giving the name any sort of evid or any sort of notice or attention would cause a storm or some sort of bad luck to bestow upon the vessel. Hence, why the island is now largely known as Blooyongfeng. Uh, again, I don't know why I'm pronouncing, pronunciating it like this, just understand that it's strange. Uh, it's the Blue Island, or the, the Virgin Island. It has lots of names. It is also said that around 300 supposed witches were killed with this region possibly due to hanging and then having their bodies being burned afterwards. Although this sort of narrative is not so much widely spread, I was able to find it on maybe one or two sources. However, multiple sources to sort of cooperate this, again, narrative is not something I could find very easily. Now, as for the legends, again, I've, I've briefly mentioned the sort of witchcraft history that the island has. However, it is a very important role within Swedish folklore. Again, this is viewed as a sort of mystical place or evil place in many people's minds. And according to widespread belief, it's related already to uh, Olos Magnus, who was a Swedish writer back in 1555, in which he sort of 
sort of brought light to the idea of witches being associated with the island. He had it written as that witches would meet on this island every Mudry Thursday. Now, Mudry, people are not aware, is the holy day falling on the Thursday just before Easter. And this sort of commemorates the washing of the feet, which is the Mudry, as well as, you know, the Last Supper, which is rather prominent within Catholicism. Now, the other sort of major thing when it comes to the legend and folklore of the island uh, relates to the polished stones that sort of wash up on the beach of Bloyangfeng. Because this location, because of the island being a national park and having that sort of status, it is illegal to remove certain aspects of the park. Uh, You're not really allowed to do that sort of stuff, and the stones sort of fall within this legal sort of realm. They themselves, however, have a different aspect as to why people don't like to take them. They are allegedly, you know, linked to the magic of the location, and they themselves are believed to be, in a lot of cases, linked to the labyrinth that was mentioned earlier. Now, the labyrinth itself has two different names. I did mention the first one being Trojaberg uh, in the beginning, however... If you want to pronounce it in a different way, uh, it's Trolleberg. And again, this is the Labyrinth of Stones that is located on the island. If you, I will be posting an overhead photo if you do wish to see that over on the uh, social media accounts. It's sort of this weird skull-slash-wave-like structure that it's literally just a row of stones moving throughout. Uh, It's not big, it's not something you can really get lost in, it's more or less a maze, but it's something rather strange that, again, no one really knows why is there. However, it is determined to be a sort of ancient stone structure on the island due to how far back it dates. Now again, whilst no one knows of the creation of the labyrinth, it is widely speculated that it was used during ancient times as a sort of ritual purpose or method. Uh, Again, there's a lot of speculation surrounding the specifics. However, many people do sort of lean towards the idea that this is some sort of ritual site. Uh, It has also been claimed that the setting up of such a labyrinth on the island was common in the past, again, this being in the Stone Age period of humanity, Uh, in which many people believe that individuals would walk through the labyrinth in order to get, uh, or in order to gain good luck. Now, relating back to the whole national park aspect, according to the tradition of people nowadays, if anyone were to steal or take a stone from the island, they would now suffer bad luck in return. The town that we mentioned earlier, the one that the island is just off the coast of, being Oscarheim, Yearly, uh, pretty much yearly, uh, receives dozens upon dozens of stones from people who were former visitors of the island. Now, oftentimes, these sort of stones are also accompanied by letters describing that they are horrendously sorry for what they had done and that misfortune and disaster had fallen their life when they took the stone and wished for it to be removed once the stones were returned. In 2004 alone, over 160 stones were sent back and were then carried through ferry back to the island. So people are doing this a lot, and and a lot of people do believe in this sort of superstition. Uh, Interestingly enough, however, when it comes to the sort of geography of the location, archaeologists who have been studying the island for the past several years have determined that ritual activity may stretch past the this specific labyrinth. They were able to identify two caves that they do believe have some sort of ritual or sort of performance-based rite uh, linked to them back in 2014. One of these caves features what may have served as a sort of altar, Uh, whilst the other uh, human modifications to the cave suggest that the area may have been used as a sort of theater, again, the performance aspect that we just mentioned. If Luoyongfeng, the island, is indeed some sort of ritual site during prehistoric times, the stories that people have now of it, you know, being associated with witches and having that sort of 
you know, not negative per se, but mystical aspect to it does actually hold a lot of grounds. Uh, and the fact that it dates so far back, uh, back into the Stone Age period, is interesting. Now, another little side thing when it comes to the geography or the geogra- ugh, geology part of this, researchers do believe that underneath one of the caves is a layer or, or sort of zone of quartz. And this is what they believe a lot of people during that Stone Age uh, may have used for raw materials when it came to their tools. However, if you are also into the paranormal, you are also aware that quartz sort of holds energy. It is one of the sort of conduit materials such as, you know, flowing water, certain types of stone, that sort of stuff sort of can maybe amplify or hold on to specific forms of energy if you believe in that stuff. So it's something to note. Um, They were not able to excavate this location, again, due to it being a national park and a sort of historic folklore location uh, in which they don't have any set permission to rip apart and maybe prove a theory, but they do firmly believe that this deposit is there. Now what about the ghosts? Uh, I didn't really mention this earlier, but um, aside from witches, it seems that the island has spirits. So bear with me because it's kind of strange. This information, a lot of people mainly just talk about the witches, The haunted aspect more or less comes from uh, investigative shows that have looked into the location. Again, uh, as in last week's episode, Destination Truth did do an investigation there, as well as local reports from people who live off nearby islands, as well as the fishing industry of the region. Now, the island is believed to be haunted by both evil and also benevolent spirits, a sort of melting pot of sorts when it comes to spiritual energy with many people believing that both natural spirits from the rituals and sort of natural energy of the region are residing, as well as those who have been linked to witchcraft, as well as the people who may have said taken part in the rituals throughout the island's history. Strange noises are also heard upon the island by those who visit, as well as, again, boats moving nearby, uh, as well as a small handful of individuals who use the only structure on the island being a very small cabin. Uh, They use this for research purposes, so people do sometimes tend to live on the island. Now, these individuals do report the sounds of knocking or chopping against wood pretty much very commonly throughout the entirety of the island. These sounds, for the most part, derive from the small wooded areas of the island, People also report the sound of disembodied voices. A lot of these are sound-based, but if you're out on an island in the middle of nowhere on your own and you're hearing strange noises, it's something to take note of. Um, Again, disembodied voices are something that are commonly heard. Uh, The sound of people chanting as well as the sound of people screaming and yelling are also heard. Both things I do not want to hear if you're stranded on a deserted island. So... The sounds themselves, specifically the noises of people chanting or singing, um, they can sometimes be related to siren calls. Uh, This is due to the fact that if you were on the island and you were curious enough to go and investigate these sounds, you do risk the danger of falling off the very steep cliffs that the island has that pretty much fall straight into rocky shores and rough water. Uh, It's not something that's very hard to do uh there's no light there there's a lots of cracks there's lots of gaps between the rocks so it's very possible for this sort of stuff to occur now it should also be noted however that when it comes to these sounds themselves uh it is possible that again with these cracks and with these gaps in the rock that some of these sounds are being caused by the winds that move around the island and the rock formations So it's something to keep note of, Uh, it's something to sort of keep in the back of your mind, but it is something, again, the sounds people report very commonly. So people who also visit the island do have some sort of physical sensation as well. There are not really many reports I could find of being touched or pulled. However, the sensation of having a ringing sound in your ear has been reported, as well as sudden and uh, rather painful headaches and uneasiness. 
And within the cabin, uh, again, this is the place where people stay if they want to live on the island for a little bit for, you know, research purposes or investigative purposes. I believe photographers and filmmakers have stayed there a few times as well. They report a lot of stuff, too. Uh, They report the sensation of being watched, again, the uneasiness, uh, the, the idea that you're not alone, but the only way to get there is by a boat that you would hear. So it's very strange, uh, the idea of not being alone when you should be. They have also reported uh, seeing shadows and figures and movement about the cabin. A lot of times they are seen in the corner, uh, sort of peeking around, sort of moving about the cabin, as well as lingering just outside the structure. So the idea of seeing movement on an island where the biggest things that live there are birds. So possibly, but there's no light to really illuminate them. So it's very, very uneasy. Investigators who do go to the location also capture, again, a lot of these sounds and a lot of these tapping noises, Um, but they also capture potential orbs on both film and photography. A lot of the orbs are also seen near the labyrinth location, and that's also where a lot of the chanting is also heard. And they also capture EVPs within the cabin. One such EVP that was recorded, this was actually from the Destination Truth episode, so do take it with a grain of salt. But the phrase Lama Hair was re- captured on the recording while they were doing a sit down EVP session. And this translates to leave now in English. So it's interesting. Whether or not the island of Blong Yongfang was sort of, you know, a thing to be worried about to begin with, like, it's like this naturally occurring hot spot of paranormal and spiritual energy i don't know or whether or not it actually became one due to all the rituals and stone age you know practices and then the witchcraft that's allegedly taken place there it's interesting to think about i don't know too much more when it comes to reports again a lot of these were not very uh, very heavily covered i should say a lot of people focus on the witchcraft aspect of it and they don't really dive into the idea that hey people are also reporting paranormal stuff they pop up every now and then but it's not again something very common that you're going to find when it comes to this location i wish it was because honestly There are a lot of places and a lot of items that are haunted that people do relate when it comes to uh, the bad luck aspect, uh, which we we briefly mentioned. But it's something that I thought about while looking into these this research that the idea that people are sending these stones back by like the dozens every year, saying you know I'm sorry I shouldn't have done this. Please 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 put this back i don't want to have this bad luck anymore you know my family is having things happen to them it makes me think a lot of haunted objects uh particularly a lot of the haunted dolls that you hear hear about i believe robert the doll is the one that has people returning letters like constantly uh asking for robert's you know like apologizing to him and asking for his forgiveness uh due to them you know disrespecting him or not believing in him or or tapping on the glass so it's very strange that people do this and it's a very common thing when it comes to vastly different stuff i believe robert the doll is in like key west florida or somewhere down there uh in Bumble wherever Florida, um, and this is a, a small abandoned island off the coast of uh, Sweden that people just don't go to. People d- never live there. They're only there for a few months for research purposes, maybe, and it's like a one-person cabin. Like, come on. So it's very strange. It's definitely a location that it would be amazing to visit maybe someday. Who knows? I don't even know if they've let you go there um, unless you have like direct permission. But it would be interesting to learn more, and if anyone does have any specific facts or stories or reports, or possibly if you have a stone uh, somewhere out there, I would love to hear about it because I want to learn more about this location. And hopefully, if you also have been there, tell me how to pronounce it properly because I don't think uh, Lo Yong Fong is... It sounds like I'm trying to speak uh, some sort of Asian language without really knowing what I'm saying. But the, the, the audio recordings that I've heard of the pronunciation are close enough that I'm like, uh, I'm just there. 
But you know, that's pretty much it for the island of witchcraft off the coast of Sweden. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy. I'm trying to keep this month's sort of topics very interesting and unique and different because, you know, it's October and I want to do something special. And uh, doing big, extravagant things is not something I'm really able to do at the moment. So I'm figuring fun topics is something that I can definitely handle. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to help out the podcast in any way, check out the social media. We're over on Twitter and Instagram. It's just Realm of Unknown, as well as Facebook groups if you want to do so. We also have the Patreon if you guys do want to support financially. Uh, It's not required, but we do have a lot of additional content, such as monthly bonus episodes, polls, articles that I come across, as well as some uh, personal investigative EVPs and photos that I find here and there. We have a one five or ugh, I can't even do the math right one three and five dollar tiers and those sort of bonus contents sort of escalate within all those tiers. So be sure to check it out if you want to. There's also a few you know public stuff there for you to enjoy if you just want to you know scroll about see what I'm posting. I sort of use it as like a second Twitter more or less. But aside from that, if you can't help financially, which I totally understand because we are in a really shitty environment at the moment. Leaving a review would be much obliged. I am over pretty much on every single uh, podcast listening platform. And I do hope to get new people and guests onto here. I had planned for people to come on for October, but it was just too tight between the original planning in September and then initiating it in October to really get people involved. And two people that I was going to get they don't live in the state anymore, apparently, and uh, I did not know this, <laughs> to, to be fair. So it would have to be through digital means, and I have to set that up properly. So until then, I do hope that you guys enjoy this episode, and I hope to see you guys next week in the whatever episode that becomes, because I'm sort of deciding between two. Um, but until then, I hope you enjoyed, and remember to stay spooky. <laughs>